Well, imagine starting a business in the desert with very limited resources such as water and electricity or opening a gas station without gas pumps. That was the situation in one desert community. Steve Summerall takes a look back in this edition of Our Desert Pass. With great pleasure, I want to introduce her with this Congressional Recognition Certificate for Chiraco Summit celebrating the 90 years. Thank you, Marjane. Thank you. No, it's just been a way of life, and I've been here since uh, 1938, pretty much off and on, and we've all, my, I have three siblings, and we've all worked in some capacity here. They, it was a lot of work, it was a lot of work, and they worked hard, and my mother was Norwegian from Minnesota, my father was from Alabama, Italian, and, uh, and because they were both second generation, that they knew how to work. Margaret Shereko Roche fondly recalls her parents, Joe and Ruth Shereko, the pioneers who founded the desert landmark known as Shereko Summit. Their story begins in 1927 when Joe came out west from Alabama to see his home state's college team play Stanford at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. But Joe never made it back home. Instead, he got a job. My dad worked for MWD in the late 20s. He was a civil engineer on the aqueduct. And then he decided he, he would like to start a business. Joe's job brought him to this area of the Mojave Desert, which was then known as Shaver Summit. There was nothing here, just desert, like you see, nothing. No water, no electricity. With rumors circulating about a new paved road between Indio and Phoenix, Joe saw the potential for a unique business opportunity. He began construction of a building that would house a gas station and general store. That business opened on August 15th, 1933. Coincidentally, the road to Phoenix, the two-laner, opened that same day in front of the business. Operating a business in harsh desert conditions would not be easy. Fortunately, Joe would not be alone. My mother was one of the first nurses in the Coachella Valley at the Indio Hospital. Her name was Ruth Bergseed, and she was a native Minnesotian of Norwegian descent. Joe had met her early during his land surveying days, and they were married on June 25th, 1934. The couple were quite content, raising their family and providing much needed amenities to passing motorists. And he sold gas by the can. He just had a little store, no gas pumps. That came later. He had, then he had two gas pumps out in front of the little store and they opened a diner when he married my grandma. So we had a lot of, of uh, things to overcome, he did, and uh, we, used to, we existed on one gallon a minute of water. So we know about conservation here. The Shirekos got their water from the nearby mountains in an area which is today known as the Joshua Tree National Monument. Well, a lack of water wasn't the only challenge faced by the Shirakos when they moved here. Believe it or not, this area wouldn't have electricity until the 21st century. That's right. On June 21st of the year 2000, commercial power came to Shireko Summit courtesy of the Imperial Irrigation District. Before that, Joe and Ruth would get their power from two industrial-sized diesel generators. My Uncle Bob and my Grandpa Joe, they, they scrambled to keep the generator power going. And when it went out, we used to drive the vehicles around to the front of the, of the diner to, uh, and have the headlights on at night so we could get people out and turn off the grills and everything. Joe would see more business after he opened due to the Metropolitan Water District beginning construction on an aqueduct project that would carry Colorado River water to Los Angeles. Then World War II happened and a very prominent public figure came to the desert. His name? was General George S. Patton. He was here a short time, 42, in 1942. Several months, he came out to survey the land as a proper site for men to train for the North African invasion. The general started the Desert Training Center, which took up 18,000 square miles of the Mojave and Colorado deserts. Adjacent to the Shereko's business was Camp Young, the headquarters of the training center. Today, this is the location of the General George S. Patton Memorial Museum. We opened in 1988, November 11th, Veterans Day. Huge crowd. A lot of people, especially young people, maybe don't, don't know or don't realize that, you know, because of the headquarters here at this location and all the other desert camps, 
that all those, all those troops were able to go over and be successful in North Africa, and then they were able to go on to Europe and be successful. In 1958, a rural branch of the U.S. Post Office opened, and this community changed its name from Shaver Summit to Shireko Summit. Joe and Ruth Shireko passed away in 1996, within months of each other. With the added construction of a Chevron station and food mart in 2004, the Shireko family legacy continues to flourish. As a somber place of remembrance to veterans of foreign wars and a testament to American ingenuity. We're here. We're here. We're the only spot between Indio and Blythe, a hundred mile stretch. And it's, it's good that we're here. For our desert past, Steve Summerall, NBC Palm Springs.